Hey everyone, how are you? In this video, I'm going to do inferencing only for Mistral 7B instruct model. And as you probably know that this model is all in the news recently for its super powerful results given its small 7 billion size. And in this video, I'm going to do the inferencing in Google Colab's free version. So the GPU consumed will be something like 5.5 GB and the RAM will be also around 5 GB. So it's a super small uh, compute resource consumed for this size of the model. So first I need the sharded version of this model. Let's see why I need the sharded. So if I go to Hugging Face uh, and you just type Mistral 7B instruct in the search box, you will see so many Mistral 7B, right? Uh, let's just take the first one. And uh, because this is a non sharded version, so if you go to this, and this is a model, just go to files and version tab. And here, and the size of this PyTorch model, you can see 10 plus 5, 15 GB. And um, th th with that, you will also need to add some overhead. So it will not fit in Google Colab's uh, free version because the RAM in the free version is around 12 GB. And that's the reason I need the sharded version. So you go to Hugging Face again and um, just type uh, SHAR and uh, yeah, so I get two sharded version. I'm just going to take the first one BN22 and in BN in the sharded model, if I go to files and version, I can see that so many different models all are sharded actually and they are all numbered like 10 uh 001 002 003 and so on and each one is around 1.5 gb and that's the beauty of sharded models and just to give you a more detail on the sharded checkpoints so when loading a full pre-trained model weights which is not sharded require a full version of the model in memory for almost all the recent 7 billion open sourced uh, large language models that may be around 15 gb plus uh, which we just saw and in Google Colab's free version, that will certainly give you out of memory error. And even worse, if you are using torch.distributed to launch a distributed training, each process will load the pre-trained model and store these two copies in RAM. Hence, a sharded checkpoint is a type of checkpoint optimized for these distributed environments. In a sharded checkpoint, the model's state dictionary, that is all its parameters and states, is divided or sharded across multiple files that is if you are doing distributed training then each of the sharded checkpoints will be distributed across multiple devices and in hugging face uh, since version 4.18 model checkpoints that end up taking more than 10 gb of space are automatically sharded in smaller pieces that is in those cases in terms of having one single checkpoint checkpoint when you do model dot safe pre-trained and pass the safe directory you will end up with several partial checkpoints, each of which will be less than 10 GB and an index that maps parameter names to the files they are stored in. And uh, while saving uh, the sharded checkpoints, you can control the maximum size of each uh, sharding with a parameter in Hugging Face called max shard size, but that's a different topic. So the main advantage of doing this for big model is that each shard of the checkpoint is loaded after the previous one capping the memory usage in ram to the model size plus the size of the biggest shard all right coming back to our collab the first thing you need to do is import all the necessary libraries torch transformers auto model console lm auto tokenizer and bits and bytes config because i need to do quantization on the model and because i'll be using a four bit quantization otherwise so much of less ram and less gpu usage will not be possible so uh, so for that the first thing i need to uh, define the config and uh, so here i am doing that with a little function little util method rather uh, called the load quantized model and what it's doing is just uh, doing this bnb config and also the defin defining the model so let's quickly go through these uh, bnb config parameter uh, first one is load in 4 bit so uh, this uh, load in 4 bit parameter is for loading the model in 4 bits precision. This means that the weights and activations of the model are represented using 4 bits instead of the usual 32 bits. This can significantly reduce the memory footprint of the model. 
4-bit precision models can use up to 16x less memory than full precision model and can be up to 2x faster than full precision model. However, if you need the highest possible accuracy, then you may want to use the full precision models. But in, in, all, in almost all home-based GPUs and also in uh, Colab's premium uh, GPU, uh, for running 13B or even 7B model, it's better to uh, do with quanti go with quantization. Next one is uh, this one, BNB 4-bit, use double quant equal to true. This parameter enables double quantization or also called nested quantization, which applies a second quantization after the initial one. It saves an additional 0.4 bits per parameter. And then uh, this one, BNB 4-bit quant type equal to NF4. This parameter specifies the type of 4-bit quantization to be used. In this case, NF4 refers to normalized float 4, which is the default quantization type. And the last one is BNB 4-bit compute D type equal to torch.bfloat16. This parameter determines a compute data type used during the computation. It specifies the use of the bfloat16 data type for faster training. The compute data type can be chosen from options like float16, uh, bfloat16, float32, etc. And this configuration is, uh, is needed because while 4-bit bits and bytes stores weights in 4 bits, the computation still happens in 16 or 32-bit. And here, any combination can be chosen, like we mentioned float16, bfloat16, and float32. The matrix multiplication and training will be faster if one uses 16-bit compute D-type. Now, one question you can ask is, does floating point, 4-bit precision quantization uh, need any particular hardware? And to answer that, note uh, that this method is only compatible with GPUs. Hence, it is not possible to quantize models in 4-bit on a CPU. Among GPUs, there should not be any hardware requirements about this method. Therefore, any pretty much any GPU could be used to run the 4-bit quantization as long as you have CUDA uh, of more than 11.2 installed. Uh, keep also in mind that the computation is not done in 4-bit. The weights and activations are compressed to that format and the computation is still kept in the desired or native D type. All right, once we have our BNB config fully defined, then the rest of the code is rather pretty easy. A model, I'm defining the model here, model here and naming the model name. Our model name has been uh, this that we just saw in Hugging Face BN22, uh, Mistral 7B instruct v0.1 sharded. And load in 4-bit, I'm making it at true and torch dtype, I'm using bfloat16 and quantization config is just what we defined, these entire configuration. All right, and that, uh, this method, uh, let me zoom out, this whole method is returning this model. And then I need to do, I need to also uh, do the initialization of the tokenizer and uh, there's another util method I'm using uh, for initializing the tokenizer with the specified model name. So tokenizer is again coming from auto tokenizer dot from pretrained and pass the same model name. And uh, yeah, that's it. Now uh, I'm just need to I just need to execute these two methods. So the next two lines here is just doing that model uh, is equal to uh, the outcome or the output of the load quantize model and tokenizer is from initialized tokenizer. All right. Now my model and tokenizer is fully ready. Uh, and it will take, it may take 5 to 10 minutes because you need to download almost 15 GB into Google Colab's uh, instance. And uh, after that, inferencing. So here I am passing a single sentence as my a text prompt. And because it's an instruction tuned model, so you need to uh, do this. Uh, first, you need to uh, pass this inst within the square bracket and also at the end you need to pass these forward slash and then inst and then inside should be your prompt whatever the prompt you want you can ask any question whatever so here i'm asking a rather simple question how ai will replace engineers and that's my text so encoded is equal to uh, encoded is the output of after applying the tokenizer. So the tokenizer I'm applying, uh, passing the text that is a prompt return tensor PT representing PyTorch at special tokens false and model input will be this encoded 
and then I need to generate the IDs. So model dot generate pass my model inputs, which is from the previous line. Max new tokens. I'm keeping it at two hundred. Do sample true. And now after I got the generated IDs, I also need to uh, decode it because these are just IDs or tensors. I need to decode it to get the actual text. So uh, decoding is by applying batch decode. So tokenizer dot batch decode and pass your generated IDs. And that's it. Now just print the first element of decoded. And that's my output. Uh, so this is uh, how AI will replace engineers. Uh, Inst is becoming increasingly prevalent in many industries and in some and in some engineering jobs may be affected while AI may augment the skills of engineers in certain cases. It is unlikely to replace engineers entirely. In reality, AI is often used to augment the work of engineers and to help make better. So yeah, it gave this entire answer and the whole answer looks pretty reasonable and pretty, uh, pretty, pretty complete. And let's see the resource used in Google Colab. So you just click on this disk and RAM and we can see that system RAM was only 4.5 GB out of max of 12.7 GB allocated by free, free Google Colab and GPU RAM only 6 GB. And uh, yeah, disk usage is of course reasonable, 40.4 GB because the model is itself is like 16 GB. Yeah, so you can see that 4.4 GB of system RAM and 6 GB of GPU RAM was enough to do the inferencing on Mistral 7B.